is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. This is awesome. Uh, come on, tell vous We're going over to Paris. What's happening? Hey, Tom. It's Adam from Paris. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, Adam. Yourself? That's good. Long time no talk. I appreciate everything you've done for me and my family over the years. So, well, we uh, appreciate you growling on problem with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah sir. Uh, I've done gold reports and all the softwares and all your books and read a generational thank you. you are, seminars, thank so you so much. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go seven hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, Whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows up. Everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make a great week, folks. To master love, you have to practice love. The art of relationship is a whole mastery, and the only way to reach mastery is with practice. To master relationship is therefore about taking action. It's not about attaining knowledge. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 201, NASDAQ up 71, S&P's up 30. Gold, gold contract up $27.20, traded at 1872 an ounce. We have silver up 28 cents, $22, one cent an ounce. Light sweet crude up 360, $86.39 a barrel, notes and bonds. A 10-year note up a full point plus one tick at 107.28. The 30-year up a full point plus 19 ticks at 112.02. And then king dollar, king dollar right now up 11 ticks, 106. 056 euro at 105 yen at 148 british pound at 122 to 1 us dollar our phone number is 877-927-6648 give us a call folks want to know what's going on in your world in the world of the s and p's let's take a look at it what do you have well bottom line friday you went higher with conviction you had wide price spread accelerated volume this morning, well, over the weekend, you had Hamas attack Israel. And the bottom line is that, you know, if we go to the futures here, what you're going to see that we didn't even, well, we did a 50% retracement from the lows of Friday to the highs of Friday to the lows of this morning. And it shook it off. It gets above the highs of Friday and if you take a look at my chart here, it has volume. It blew out that high with volume. Now that in itself, folks, okay, is saying that guess what? Higher markets are coming at us. When you can when you can do something like that, and that's markets are that deviant. It's unbelievable. It really is. You know, now the gold contract did move. And gold jumped off its lows. And we'll see what kind of follow-through we can get. Because the price-wise it's good, but we only still only have 172,000 contracts. That this baby should be bringing out like a couple hundred thousand contracts. But my my take is that that's off the bottom also. The Qs, NDX 100. We take a look at the NDX 100. Same type of setup. The bottom line: this market wants higher price. But, you know the Qs are leading. What you had is that you know we were only one day. We broke the swing for one day. Shook it off. Had the sign of strength, have follow through now. Bottom line, you know, the Q's right now are 366. The next move here is somewhere at the, uh, the 380 number. And this one is really important too. The real question is going to be do we get follow through inside the note and bond market? Because the note and bond market, you know, what the note and bond market did, when you take a look at this, is that. We had come down last Wednesday with some volume. Friday, with 2.5 million contracts. Friday, it didn't make it to the low of 2.3. You're higher today, light volume. Bottom line is that what it has done, though, it has broken the uptrend, the downtrend, rather. So the 10-year now is saying it wants to go to 111.12. If that's the case, that means that we very well may have topped out 
because the, the, the bond stories were all over the weekend. They were everywhere, too. Bottom line, we'll see whether it's topped out. It would have been topped out at 4.801. Right now, we are at uh, high. That's weird. No, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, I see what's going on. Yeah, they're not updating this because of the fact that the bond market itself is closed today. Electronically, we're open, okay, but the bottom line, the bond market is closed. GC, we go into the gold contract. Well, let's, let's go into the GDX. Oh, no, no, we got to go to the dollar first because this is the dollar is running everything. Okay, so we take a look at the dollar, and what you're going to see is it's right at, uh, let me do this a better one. It's right at the channel line. Hasn't broken it yet. What we have done today is we certainly gave up on price. I'll get it this time. There you go. So we, we got to 106,600. Right now you're at 106,052. So you can see you need one more day and this channel line will bust. Now, what you'd like to see, well, what I'd like to see is a bust on conviction. And what that means is that you get a wide price spread run. And if that's what we get, then, you know, you're going to continue to see the S&P go higher. You're going to continue to see the commodities go higher. Let's go over to the oil contract. Oil, oil and gold were the only things that really moved over the weekend. Okay, so you get 390 on, on the uh, Middle East. Okay, so you get 399,000 contracts. Hey, we came down with just as many. So, you know, that's not telling me anything yet. We came down with actually 460,000. Yeah, we came down with 460,000. So this is actually going to need more contract volume in order to get to higher price. We go to the GDX. We take a look at the GDX. All the gold stocks are moving, and they... They have some juice underneath them. We go to the GDX. That came off the lows Friday, had good volume on it. Right now we're trading at uh, 27.59. Now what this just did, this just got in the higher range. So if we close here, that's really good news, man. It's saying that, okay, this baby wants to run now to the 30.13. We'll take it step by step on the way up. But it did get to the next range up, okay? And, you know, it's going to be really interesting to see how this whole thing shakes out. If we go to an Eagle, Eagle, that has a little juice underneath it today. AU, they, they all have some. They, they, they don't all. Yeah, I'll show you a new one. New one's still a laggard, man. Um, Anglo Gold is a powerhouse. That's, you get price, volume, you get everything happening. And then Newmont, and Newmont, see, Newmont and Barrick. Yeah, the new one's down 25 cents. Newmont and Barrick are Leggett's out there. So that's going to be Leggett's inside the XAU and the HUI. Stay right there, folks. Come back with our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes. We have the Dow Industrials up 177, NASDAQ up 65, S&P's up 28. We'll come right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. The Dow. Dow's up 189. Nasdaq's up 60. S&Ps are up 29. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Steve Rose, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show every trading day, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Also, a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. Go into newsletters. You'll see it right on the right-hand side. You get Mastering Probability for one month for $149. Six months is six ninety five, which is a savings of one hundred ninety nine dollars or twenty two percent, and one full year for eleven ninety five, which is a savings of five hundred ninety three dollars or thirty three percent. Now they all come with a thirty day money back guarantee, folks. Okay, so you can pick whatever one you like. If it works for you, awesome. For some reason, it doesn't work for you. Bottom line, just cancel the twenty ninth day. You get your money back. And on top of that, Steve has a huge amount of different indicators that he used. You study those the next 30 days, and guess what? You got a nice little bundle, <laughs> no doubt. Steve Rose, what's happening? Well, you know, our Rays and Marlins didn't do too well no. in the playoff series. So we've we got to fall back to our Buccaneers and the, and the uh, Dolphins, which are still, they're still doing well. I don't think Tampa didn't play this weekend, right? No, and then but then we, then preseason we get the lightning starting. So yeah, yeah, starts so tomorrow, right? I think you guys are kicking it off, right? Yeah, so yeah. That's a beautiful. That's a beautiful. It's a great time of the year. You got that going. Plus the uh, uh, college football. Uh, it, for me, it doesn't get more beautiful than that. No, I listen. I'm with you, man. That that, yeah. that college football, man. The scores they run up are, like amazing. <laughs> and, and great athletes, just great. You know, really yes. great athletes all around today yes. in college. Uh, you know, if you take a look at the golfers that are out there. Um, you know, it's just extraordinary talent. Uh, it just gets younger and younger and younger. It so does. Does it doesn't do well for me, but uh, that's okay. We'll just keep moving forward on those tee boxes. That's right. So yeah, so you know, we had obviously a war, uh, you know, in the Middle East break out again, and uh, so I thought, well, why don't uh, what what can I best do with our segment today? And I said, you know, let's go see how the S and P 500, how gold and oil traded during other prior uh, wars that are out there. Because as I said, this is a Middle East war again with regard to Israel and, and, and the Arab nations out there. So in 2006, that was the last war that I was able to pick up on. And it was kind of, it's referred to as the Israel-Hezbollah war. Okay. And it began on July 12th. 
ended on August 14th, so it was 34 days worth of war. So this is a chart for the ES mini. The reason why I'm using the ES charts instead of the um, S&P 500 charts is here I can capture more so what went on, how the market actually reacted out here, and yes. because of all the different patterns that I use out here. So I've identified, Tom, the day that that war began, July 12th, and we can see that it certainly was a down day and price closed below the bottom of a profile. And then the very next day it closed below this little red line. That's the oscillator and change line. That tells us that market conditions were bearish. And you would have said, hey, that's pretty simple. We're going to go back and test that prior swing point, which is in fact what happened. So we had the market move lower for basically four days and then it moved on up out of there. Um, and I've got listed here the uh, August 14th day when the market um, had reopened again. So it really wasn't a, uh, in fact, if anything, I would say in this case here, if we didn't know that there was a war or anything that went on and we just simply paid attention to the pattern, such as a test and rejection of a prior swing point, or here we get a TD9 count uh, top and price pulls back. Um, you know, it's, so the patterns really what stuck out at me. So uh, how did the how did gold trade during that same same time period? So here we can see I've identified the uh, where gold was at on uh, July 12th. We saw just like we saw kind of a two or three bar move to the downside inside of the S&P. We had a basically a two to three bar move to the upside and then just simply uh, gold moved lower out here. We can see the August 14th. Um, end of the war out there, uh, so to speak. And really there wasn't overall, there really wasn't much movement in between that uh, time period, in between that 34 days out there. Now, you know, when I was out of town this weekend and uh, we didn't turn on the uh, television until kind of late on uh, Saturday. And that's when I, you know, got the news of what was going on. And, you know, we were traveling yesterday as well, so didn't get back till late. But certainly, you know, when, when gold was up, that wasn't a surprise. But of course, I was thinking, hey, it's a war. This thing is probably just simply going to start a gigantic run. If we take a look at how lights we crude traded during that same time period here, we've got identified the first arrow is helping us to identify where price was traded and how it responded on July the 12th. Again, it was about a two day reaction to the upside. This set up, Tom, a, a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. And then it was just history with regard to lights read crude all the way uh, down into a, a low back in the 2007 uh, time frame. So this was in 2006 where we take a look at this Hezbollah war. So if we take a look at the next war that I was able to identify is 1982. They refer to it as the Lebanon War. And that uh, began on June 8th and it ended sometime in September of 1982. Don't have a specific date. They really are saying that if you take a look at the history, it's saying that was really the main phase that was complete by that time period. So here we can see in this case here, Israel uh, uh, invaded Lebanon and they did that on June 6 of 1982. What happened was it formed uh, a, teen, it's hard to read, but it was a nice TD nine count bottom that formed. We had a few day rally out here. We can see that there was another TD nine count top that formed out here, moved all the way down until we got to this Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. Some of the tools that you had mentioned that subscribers get access to that I, that I teach folks. So this is really more about, the, so do we have a move lower? Sure. When the so-called uh, phase was over, we rallied, we actually were higher when we take a look at the S&P 500. So for me, when I take a look at this, this tells me pay attention to the patterns more so than the, um, more so than, you know, the news uh, that's going on out there. Now, I, I didn't have access, Tom, to uh, to uh, gold or oil charts uh, going back that far. So I just stuck with the S&P 500, or the ES, well, in this case here, the S&P 500. And this was the 1973 Yom Kippur War. So this started on, this lasted for um, six, seven days, maybe 10 days, something like that. But here we can see where the war started, price was still moving higher, it was above a green oscillator and change line, it tells us about a bullish market condition out there. So not a substantial impact to the S&P 500 with regard to that war. Here's the six day war, the 1967 six day war, June 5th through June the 10th out here. On the uh, day that that war began, that was a TD9 count bottom. Price just simply moved higher. So it didn't matter about the war, it was really about the patterns inside the markets that were out here. So where are we now? Where are we now in the markets? Well, if we take a look at last week inside the ES Mini specifically, it formed both a daily by the D point pattern and a weekly by the D point pattern. Both those also referred to as Gartley buy signals. So in this case here, we've got a buy. In fact, if an ES close today above 4370 and 4370 to 4416 is the sell zone this is a bearish structure daily profile but a close about 4370 on the daily chart today suggests that 
price makes a move to 44.16. The weekly chart, the one on the right-hand side, suggests that price makes its way up to 44.24. So the target range to the upside, 44.16 to 44.24. That's assuming price closes above 43.70. And lo and behold, if we take a look at the last 25 years out here, the ES Mini, from a seasonal standpoint, bottoms right here, right now. That red line, that is today. Yes. Right here. So that's the 25-year cycle. Now, on the other side of it is, if the ES Mini closes below 42.35.50, that's the low of that weekly hammer candle. That then says, and we took a look at this last week, that the pre-election cycle pattern kicks in and that markets move lower into the end of the year. As to gold and silver out here, gold, silver, they all had in the GDX, GDXJ, they all had TD9 count bottoms. They already had those patterns in play out here. Gold right now trading above the top of its profile. That suggests a further rally. And I would say the further rally could take us up to the 1925 to 1925. 48 level tone. You gotta love these markets, Steve, right? I mean, it, it's, just, it's just amazing because the patent the patent is rule, folks. That's the bottom line. Okay? They really do. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I, I, look, when, when I went to start putting these charts together, I expected to see something totally different. Yeah, no, but listen, I know. I know. Right? Crazy. But, Have a great one. Have a safe one, Steve. Thanks, Tom. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. The Dow. Dow Industries right now trading up 175. You get the NASDAQ up 59. S&Ps are up 27. Let's go inside the NDX 100 and see what's moving the NDX out here. So you have Zscaler is up 3.9%. Uh, 
You get Diamond Energy up 3.4. Baker Hughes up 3.2. And Trade Desk is up 2.1. Taken away from it, Data Dogs down 3.8. Moderna is off 2.3. Lucent, the car company, is off 2.2. And IDEX Pharmaceuticals off 1.61. We go into the Dow Industrials. And we take a look at point wise what's moving the markets out here. You get uh, Chevron putting 31 positive points, Caterpillar 29, Amgen 25, Microsoft 14 taken away from it, Procter & Gamble 6, Walmart 6, American Express 3, and Coca-Cola 2. Not, not, not a whole lot of action there, that's for sure. We go into the, uh, let's go to the U.S. 3. Let's go, I'm going to go to this. We'll do a little work on these bonds out of here. So this is the 30 year. So you're at 112, US 1. I'm going to put a generic one up here first. I got to bring this back. I got to bring this back like 40 years, which is pretty amazing. <laughs> I'll try 30 first, but I don't think, I don't think it's 30. Yeah, 30 works. Okay. So when you take a look at this, what you're going to see, there it is right there. Okay, cool. You're going to see, you're coming into, now that's a huge amount of support. Yeah, so check this out, folks. Okay. The level that we're at. Now, so Pitt, now they always look at this over the weekend. So listen to this. This is amazing. From 1999, okay. The 30 year, it took 24 years to get to its high, right? It only took a year and a half to get back to that level. Well, not to the bottom of the level, but to the bar. So let, let's, let's picture, let's do it a different way. Yeah, all we have to do is minus off from 2001. If we use 2001, is that bizarre? 2001, so it took 20. Yeah, it took 22 years to get to its high and a year and a half to get back. Now, over the weekend, you know, he had stories everywhere. Worst bond sell-off since the 1787, you know, blah, blah, blah. That's what you're looking for when you're looking for bottoms, folks. And you can see when you're taking a look at this, this is a lot of support in here, man. Because if we take a look at this, this bond traded here from 2002 to 2007. That's, that's, the, that's these bottoms right here. So we'll see how it shakes out. But as I said earlier, I think, you know, I think we've topped. And if we have topped, it was a question. What does happen is this. If bonds are going lower, we will see the dollar go lower also. Because what ends up happening, it's all about interest rate structure. And, you know, when the bottom line is that when the bonds are, you know, paying that kind of money, well, what that does, that puts huge amounts of strength under the dollar also. And, you know, the dollar is giving up, uh, well, we gave up 600, well, 550 ticks today in the dollar. That is a big number. Let's go to the silver market because silver, you know, highly volatile, no doubt about that. You got a little follow through today, 31,000 contracts, nothing heavy. And bo both gold and silver out here today, folks, you have follow through, but you need more volume. Now, what does happen out here, it's like a half a holiday. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's the bottom line, is that the markets are open. Um, the, in the Northeast, there's plenty of people that are off. You know, Columbus Day is a big, you know, holiday in the northeast so there's plenty of people that are not at work but you can see inside the silver market this still had, this is out of its range it has to get back inside the 2268 area what's going to be interesting about gold and silver in general watch this gc you know i've talked about how you can pick up or you can think that heads and shoulders are all over the place in the marketplace but this one's going to get really interesting because look at the way that gold is right now, right? So you can picture that if we just made a head, then, you know, you're going to get up to this, you know, 19, 
70 area. And if it is a head and shoulders, then you're going to go sideways and then you blow topside. You know, now you can't depend on that right now because as I said earlier, every time you look at, when you're looking for head and shoulders, you can find them pretty good. But this is a kind of a cool one, man. <laughs> and silver has the same thing. It has the same setup that's in it. Let's go into the copper market and take a look at copper. So copper out here, that came off its lows also. Now, what happened in China today is the king of copper has disappeared. <laughs> Let's see what they're saying here. Let me see if I can find this for you again. Um, these people in, in China, China, they just disappear, man. And it's one of the biggest copper companies in China. Uh, anyway, yeah, he disappeared. So we'll see how that shakes out. But bottom line is that what, what Copper did do, you know, it had a false break downtown when it went, it went underneath this uh, 358 area, jumped right up back above it. And then if we take a look at a couple of the Copper stocks, they're going to have to build some cars. Like SCCO, it's not bad, but, you know, it's come back into you know the June strength that it had had some decent volume Friday, but this has to build cause for a higher price. FCX Freeport Mac Moran is a little bit better shape because they have more than copper. Uh, this also came back to you know strength. Did it with tremendously lighter volume. You know I suspect it's going to start building cause also for higher price. And if we take a look at number wise out here. You got Freeport Mac Moran. Oh, we're getting close. That's got, that's going to be coming out with numbers on the 19th. They're going to be looking for 5.6 billion in the top line, 33 cents in the bottom line. And if we take a look at Southern Copper, that is going to be the 27th, and they're looking for 2.5 billion the top line and 77 cents in the bottom line. Now let's go over to Barrick because what's happening, Barrick and Newmont are laggards inside the, you know, the gold stocks. And I'm not quite sure whether, you know, this has to do with the aspect that Mark Bristow wants to get into copper in a heavy, heavy way. But, you know, this has a lot of work to do, man, you know, which is really intriguing. So what you are going to see, you're going to see Weakness in the XAU, the HUI, as well as the GDX, because the two largest weightings are Barrick and Newmont. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? 
Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. It's our Dow Industrials right now up 154. You get the NASDAQ up 49. S&Ps are up 43. And let's go take a look at some of the high flyers out here. So let's start with Amazon because, you know, bottom line is that we're coming up to the holidays so Amazon's up 21 cents. Hasn't had a big pullback, you know, said from the S&P. So we pull this in. Yeah, this is a decent setup, man. This one's higher price. Now, you know what's interesting here? Look at this, man. I was just talking about a head and shoulders. That's about as good a head and shoulders as you can get. Look at this. This is crazy. Bump. <laughs> yeah. This is about as clean as you can get. So this just has to break the neckline, man. And you're off to the races. Here's your, here's your head. You got your shoulder. Might have to do a little more work there, but... Microsoft. What do you have inside Microsoft? Microsoft's a huge powerhouse, man. I mean, that's... That's the bottom line. And what Microsoft has, if you're looking for a longer-term deal, Microsoft has a high-volume high. So going back to those highs, we're at 329. What is that, 360 area? You know, let's, and let's see when they're coming out with numbers. So they're coming out the 25th. They're looking for 54.5 billion and 265 to the bottom line. Look at Microsoft. This is amazing. So in five years, they've doubled. I uh, know they did 100. They've added 100 billion dollars in gross. 125 billion they did five years ago. This year they're going to do 236 billion. That's about as intense as you can get. Nvidia. We take a look at Nvidia. They're going to be coming out with numbers. November 21st. They're going to be looking for. 16 billion and three dollars and 33 cents to the bottom line now <laughs> this is really wild nvidia in 90 days is doing as much as they did in a full year in only 2021 that's a whole different ball game we take a look at meta this has action too when is this coming out with numbers this is coming out the 25th they're going to be looking for 33 billion and 358. They're accelerating that uh, bottom line, man. And they're still growing quite a bit. And then let's go to Google. The thing that's going to be interesting with Google is see how this whole case revolves. You know, thus far, Google is shaking it off. You know, technically, Google's going to be coming out the 25th. And. They're looking for 63 billion and a buck 44. They did 131 billion five years ago, 254. 
this year. You know, if you're following that case at all, there are so many different payoffs inside the search engines, it's unbelievable. And Apple is one of the biggest um, payoffs that Google actually does. And it's billions and billions of dollars. But you can see why. why. It, 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 it's a no-brainer. Because the fact of the matter is, is that they do have a monopoly. So we'll see how they decide that they're going to deal with this. And you know what's wild is that the FTC, that lady running it, she's lost just about every case. But I start looking at the Google case, I'm saying to myself, you know, she just might win that case. And that would be a mind blower. Um, but, you know, we've dealt with it enough. I've dealt with the auction market. Over the weekend, they were showing inside the auction market how they basically got it rigged. Or they had it rigged in order to get this number two price very close to the number one price so that everyone is paying about the same. You know, when Google started, now this, this is, I'm talking about the auction market for, uh, well, this is the auction market for digital ads. Google had, in 2000 and, let's see, 2010, this was a real score. We, we took advantage of it for about a year. What had happened is that they made a deal with TV stations and you could take the inventory for TV stations, including Bloomberg and CNBC, right? And you wouldn't believe how inexpensive it was, folks. It was like crazy. So what would end up happening is that some people would be paying $400 a minute and some people would be paying $22 a minute. That's how crazy it was. Because I used to be on it quite a bit. And, of course, we were paying the $22 a minute. Because what ends up happening, the way the inventory is, right, is that they would update it, you know, live every single day. And I just put low bids in, and all of a sudden they come across that I have it. I said, I can't even believe this, man. You know, so, unfortunately, that to them wasn't enough traction, though. They didn't get enough traction, so they got rid of that whole deal. Now, digitally, of course, they have it beyond belief. And, you know, what hasn't come out yet even inside those, uh, like, I, I wouldn't expect it to actually come out in the trial because, but what still does happen is that the amount of money that these big advertisers pay versus what they actually get is insane. Because what happens is that, you know, like when the ad shows up on the side, Three, two, one, and you can get rid of it. Well, the advertiser has to pay for that. And, and you know that when it happens, right? It's like, okay, you can get rid of that ad so quick. You know, it's like, really? Do you, do you think they got anything part of that ad? No, they didn't. Meaning, no one what it was. They just got rid of it, but yet the advertiser has to pay for it. That's how that thing works. So, and what happens is that it's one little world altogether because the way that it works is that the big companies rely on the big agencies and the big agencies rely on Google and Microsoft and Amazon. And as far as they're concerned, once they give you a price per 1,000, that's what it is. It doesn't matter. They're all, they're all basically... They're all basically almost monopolies. That's, that's the real bottom line. And the amount of fraud in it is freaking insane. Meaning the amount that those large companies actually pay versus what they get. You know? And I've looked at it a million different ways. And in fact, the last time that I pushed into it, it was quite a while ago, it was six or seven years ago. But I showed one of our large advertisers what they were actually getting versus what they thought they were getting. And it was a total mind blower. They just like, are you kidding me? But that's because I've been in this business for a long period of time. And, you know, the Nielsen ratings, you know, all of those ratings, Arbitron ratings, they've always been basically shaky. But guess what? It's an old boys club. You pay this, we get that. We pay this, third party checks going around. That's how it goes. 
Dow, Dow Industries is up 173, Nasdaq's up 45, S&P's up 25. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we look at the Bank of America, and you can see this has been a one-way trip on the way down. Well, listen to this. This is wild. You know, we know the regional banks are stuck with, you know, these long-dated uh, bonds, but, the, you know, Brian Monaghan had basically told investors that uh, his bank would be a big winner when interest rates eventually finally one day went up. Well, guess what, folks, okay? Yeah, they went up all right, but what ended up happening is that the Bank of America, let me look at this for a second. This is wild, man. So this is coming out today. Bank of America bought not just billions, hundreds of billions of long-dated treasury and mortgage bonds when the rates were down at lows, okay? They are totally toast, man. It's saying here, the decision is still subject to finger pointing within the walls of the second largest bank. Say people familiar with the matter, now that these holdings are showing huge paper losses and missing out on some of the best rates since 2007. Now it's just really intriguing there. I suspect we're gonna find out that it's just not the regionals that are holding, you know, all these garbage but probably all the big banks too. Now what does happen, which never would happen for you and I, 
is that the Federal Reserve is still allowing them to basically say that they're 100 cents on the dollar when they could be trading at 70 cents on the dollar. So, you know, all these, all these rules are basically <laughs> just depends on, you know, what part of the market we're in, what cycle we're in. And the Fed just changes the rules, man. And, you know, they did that with the, the vote in the note and bond market. Now, it would totally make sense. Why? Because what ends up happening is that if they didn't do that, could you imagine in their balance sheets, okay, half these banks probably would be BK. If they're BK, then what does that mean? That means the Fed has to put more, more money into them. So either way, you know, you get the gist of it. Pretty amazing. Always remember, folks, the bear can claw your heart out, the bull can run you over, and thank God there's always another trade. Health, happiness, and prosperity. Have a great night, folks. Have a safe night. Come back and visit Tommy tomorrow morning. Kicks us off 9 a.m. Great show, folks. Look at him, folks.